So hello, thank you all for joining today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, good night, maybe even wherever you are. Um, my name is Edgar May. Uh, it's my distinct honor to be giving this keynote uh, at this first workshop on information retrieval in finance. Um, I'll be saying a few words about search and discovery, obviously for finance. Uh, and of course, I would have loved to do this in person. Uh, ideally, I would have gone to China uh, and be in the same room with you. Um, of course, with the current state of the world, uh, that's not an option. Uh, also, given the fact that I'm based in London, it is now the middle of the night, I decided to make this recording instead. Um, so like I said, my name is Edgar, Edgar May. I lead a number of teams over here uh, at Bloomberg in London in our AI engineering department. Uh, before that, I did my PhD uh, in computer science, actually, in information retrieval in Amsterdam with Martin de Rijka. After my PhD, I did a short postdoc, uh, and then I moved into industry. Uh, I first went to Yahoo Labs uh, in beautiful, sunny Barcelona, after which I made my way to London, and that's how I ended up at, uh, at Bloomberg uh, around five years ago. In those five years, I worked on a number of things, including search. Uh, right now, I'm leading a number of teams involved with question answering, involved in the Bloomberg Knowledge Graph, involved, involved with uh, advanced search and discovery for the, for the terminal that I will give ample examples of later on. If we had done this presentation in person, if we were all in the same room right now, I would have asked for a show of hands, because I always find that people um, know the name Bloomberg, uh, but they don't often know what Bloomberg actually does, uh, Bloomberg as a company. Um, you might argue Bloomberg is finance, right? But we are actually very much a technology company. We are in the business, and our main strength and focus uh, is to provide data and information and analytics, but also to provide community tools. I'll have an example of this uh, in a little bit. We are also, of course, known for being a creator and a consumer of news. We have a big newsroom, um, and indeed, we have offices all over the world to break news um, from, from where the news actually happens and occurs all over the world. Um, to give you a sense of scale uh, with regards to the company, we have about 300,000 subscribers of so people using a Bloomberg terminal uh, all over the world. And we have about 20K employees, again, all over the world. Um, a large, sizable chunk of the employees are software engineers, uh, with an increasing amount of people working, uh, both engineers and researchers, working on AI and AI-related problems, such as myself. So as I said before, we're mainly in the business of providing uh, data and information uh, to the financial, to finance professionals. What you see at the bottom right here is a screen grab uh, from a TV series that actually features uh, the Bloomberg terminal you see in the back there. So more often than not, when you see some like uh, traders on a big trading floor with these like six up screens setups, uh, more often than not, these people are running a Bloomberg terminal. Right? So you can use it to get all sorts of data. You can use this to source all sorts of analyses. Um, but you can also use it to make trades, for instance, right? And I will be saying a little bit more about all those functionalities later on. We provide news, as I said before, um, and the community part is a big one, right? We have a messaging client in the terminal. We have an instant messaging client in the terminal um, and finance professionals from all over the world, like portfolio managers or head funds managers or central bank employees use the terminal uh, to interact with each other. But by and large, the outset here is to facilitate financial decision making. Um, <clears throat> The remainder of this talk will be more focused on search, obviously, and information retrieval. Um, so I'll be saying a few words about news search, uh, also about other kinds of data that we uh, search are able to search through, other kinds of data that our clients and those finance professionals at large are interested in. Um, search is only one aspect, of course. So I'll be also be touching upon uh, things beyond search, things like alerting, things like sentiment, things like automated news. Um, and a little bit about natural language search and question answering, and general discovery uh, as a whole, uh, which is very important in our, uh, in our setting. But first, let's start um, with news. I think that's the one thing that Bloomberg may be uh, most well known for, and that is the newsroom. So the Bloomberg newsroom covers about 10,000 stories a day. Again, like I said, all over the world. Um, most of it is uh, journalist driven, so humanly edited, humanly curated. An increasing amount of these news stories are also automated. Uh, and I have a separate section on this later in the presentation. And, and the topics that we break, the topics that we cover are uh, by and large around economics, right, and government finance, company news, and global markets. 
We also have a strong track record in breaking news. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit why that is important to us. But really, we have a strong track record in breaking news that actually matters to the markets, to the financial markets at large. Um, increasingly, we find that, bra that news breaks not just in the conventional sense, but of course also on social media. So we also uh, have a large presence online on Bloomer.com, but also on various uh, like Twitter feeds and other kinds of social media outlets. At the same time, the Bloomberg Terminal is also a news aggregator. So we don't just produce news that people can search through, that our clients can search through, um, but we also ingest news from all over uh, all over the world, really. So we take in about 170K sources, wires, right? These include things like Dow Jones, Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, Associated Press, and so on. Um, and also indeed like more local sources. We also scrape, scrape web content, we harvest company websites, we exchange, we uh, find press releases and we make them searchable. And increasingly we do stuff with uh, automated speech transcripts where we basically listen in on a earnings call, for instance, where the CEO speaks about performance about a company. And then after the fact, we make a transcribed version um, of that speech available for search. Um, as I said, we also uh, ingest social media. We produce social media and we also ingest social media. So we have a universe of Twitter handles that are financially relevant, that are manually curated, that we ingest and make searchable uh, in the terminal. Similarly for Facebook and Weibo and stock grids. Um, and needless to say, there's an example here on the right-hand side. Uh, the things that we ingest are, of course, not just restricted to English. Uh, so multilinguality is indeed uh, a very central piece uh, of, of all of our workflows that I'll actually also get back to in a little bit. To give you a sense of scale, so this is SIG IR, so to give you an idea of the kind of volumes that we have in terms of new search only, right? Um, so top left, you see that we have about 300,000 subscribers, like I already said, so these are our clients, people that use the terminal. On the bottom left side, you see about the, the, the rough volume of stories. So these are news items that we ingest uh, every day. There's about 2 million of them, uh, so the bulk of it, it gets ingested from external sources, like I said, from Twitter, from the New York Times, and so on. Uh, and if you do the math, this amounts to about 500 documents being ingested per second. Um, on the flip side, so on the top right, we have about 16 million queries every day, questions, queries that uh, users ask of us. And the stories that we ingest, uh, from the moment we get them in, they need to be available for search in about 100 milliseconds, which is not a lot of time to do uh, a lot of interesting things, as I will touch upon later. On the bottom right, you see some statistics with regards to news alerts. I also have a, a separate section on this later in the presentation. Um, and this is, by and large, a very, well, maybe the most sizable chunk of uh, news search functionality that we see within the terminal. We will set up alerts to be alerted for any and all interesting things that happen uh, with the companies that they care about, with the people that they care about, or the topics that they might care about. And they might even care about these things indirectly, uh, as we will see later. So why do we care? Why do we care about news and about, uh, about these sort of low latency kind of efforts? What you see here is a visualization. It's a, it's a chart price of a big American investment bank uh, from some years ago. The x-axis here is in the order of minutes. So there's about like 10, 20 minutes uh, on the x-axis here. The y-axis is, as I said, the stock price. At some point in time, the SEC, that's the American watchdog for publicly traded companies, made an announcement. Uh, they put a press release on their website that they were going to investigate this particular investment bank. Uh, we picked this up, right? So there was a headline being pushed out uh, on the Bloomberg terminal, uh, what, like 1036, 1037 maybe, and people started trading on this information, right? You see the stock price declining. People are selling the stock uh, and they want to get rid of this. Then two minutes in, the New York Times breaks the story, breaks the story, um, and you see the actual stock price uh, entering kind of a free fall. Needless to say, if you are an investor, a serious professional investor, you want to write this wave early, right? You want to be alerted as soon as possible when such a thing happens, such a thing that you can get out uh, when damage hasn't been too extensive yet. Now, in order to do so, we need to have low latency, as I already said. Um, but of course, we also need to have a notion of entities, right? Um, so what we find in search and understanding and information with people in general in the financial context, um, entities are central. So these are tickers, they are companies, they are people, and also topical codes. So what you see here in the screenshot is an example of a news story uh, with a title that's at the top, and you see all the, um, the entities that have been assigned to that story. 
Um, some of these have been assigned by the editor, by the journalist, uh, if possible. In other cases, we, should, we use AI, we use entity linking to identify the most relevant, the most salient entities in the news story and also topics um, that we assign a score to be used downstream in the search functionality. You might wonder how do finance professionals search? Um, on the right hand side here, you see a screenshot of the advanced news search editor. Uh, it's called advanced because you are, it allows you to build complicated and complex queries, right? So these queries can pivot around keywords, obviously, they can pivot around companies, they can pivot around topics, people, regions, industries, and sources, and combinations thereof, and multiple languages also, I might add. Um, at the bottom right here, by the way, is not a natural language expression of that uh, of, of the query that uh, that I typed in there or that I selected in there, but rather it is our uh, internal representation for that particular query. As you can imagine, these queries can be arbitrarily complex, right? So uh, people have been seen to use, or our users have been known to create queries as long as 20,000 characters. Um, you can imagine people having a list of securities, a list of companies that they're interested in because they have an investment, uh, what we call a ticker list. And they could easily be a thousand or thousands of companies in there that they want to get uh, search results for. I'll get to the alerting in a little bit, uh, but all these searches can also be made alertable. So you can actually save a search uh, and get notified of updates going forward. Of course, there's also a notion of user privileging. Not everyone has access to the same kind of sources based on local legislation or other kinds of considerations. And as I said before, uh, we can search uh, and, and retrieve stories in a multitude of languages from all over the world, right? If your local market is a Brazilian market, uh, you want to get your stories uh, maybe sent to you in Portuguese and not just English, for instance. Another easier way that we see increased use of with an internal, this is something that my teams are working on, is to use natural language, right? So instead of like clicking together um, a very complicated, complex Boolean query, like we saw just now, you might also just use natural language to uh, formulate the thing that you're looking for. So what I typed here, by the way, on the right-hand side is a screenshot of the um, Bloomberg terminal, if in case it wasn't clear, like on the, um, one of the terminals and the question the query here is news on ventilators and trump in the us from twitter um our parsers will parse this uh, and we'll extract and turn this into uh, a structured query that recognizes for instance we're looking for donald trump here and then we're looking for the string ventilators with news from the united states in twitter okay so that was news um, we obviously also have other kinds of data that is of interest to any kind of financial professional. Uh, you can imagine company forms or company filings, right? So these are all sorts of like uh, unstructured or semi-structured documents, think like text documents or HTML or PDFs. I mentioned transcripts earlier on uh, that we have seen increasing use of. Uh, we see Twitter data that I've already mentioned. There's also things like live, uh, live logs or web logs. I mean, just press releases. We have a product vertical that's called B Law, um, which basically aims, well, it does a number of things. But one of the things is that you can search through court dockets, like which companies are uh, litigating against each other and what are they talking about. Uh, we have prospectuses in there, of course. Research documents. This is not the kind of research that you and I do in the context of SIGIR, but these are research documents that analysts produce uh, over at banks um, that are in-depth analyses of company performance or industry's performance and so on. You can also think of statements from central banks or federal meeting minutes uh, and, and so on and so forth. So, my reason for putting this on the slide is to give you a feel for the different kinds of uh, the different sort of ranges of domains but also the types of um, types of text that we are dealing with on one hand side you have shorthand tweets and on the other hand the other extreme you might consider something like federal meeting minutes uh, which have a tendency of being very verbose um, and not making very many factual statements I also want to highlight the fact that increasingly we see uh, data in a form of structured data you may have heard the term all data uh, that's seeing an increase in popularity recently, where things like, I don't know, geospatial data, things like uh, satellite imaging data, things like, I don't know, footfall traffic in uh, US malls are increasingly becoming relevant for tech heavy uh, quant shops, right? Where they basically want to correlate, I don't know, uh, in the app installs on an iPhone for a certain company, and they want to correlate that with a future stock price, for, for instance. 
You can also think of things like economic indicators, uh, like, I don't know, the jobless rates in the US um, or securities related data or geospatial data and any and all other kinds of structured data that we increasingly need to make searchable and made findable for, uh, for our clients. To give you an idea of how we do search across the terminal, imagine that you're a client right, and you have an interest, you want to find some piece of information, you want to find a data point, where do you start? Um, so I have this notion of unified search within the terminal, and the goal here really is to, inf to ease information discovery. You should be able to ask in natural language what it is that you're trying to do, and not so much where it might be. Right? The Bloomberg terminal is a big place, and we really want to have one interface um, to find any and all information that you're looking for. The interface that you see, by the way, on the right-hand side is uh, it's being revamped as we speak, um, but it's, it's a classical, uh, in this particular way of visualizing it, it's a classical federated search engine where you have different backends uh, with different results. And one layer on top to do the query interpretation, the ranking and the result aggregation uh, and merging. But yeah, you can ask these questions like I know, American banks, it will give you an overview. Uh, or in the top right here, you see tech acquisitions in Asia from last week, and we all understand that you get a tabular result. Or something like the government debt of Australia at the bottom right. Here. Increasingly, we um, aim to build out, as I said before, our semantic parsing and question answering capabilities. So here I typed Facebook versus Google revenue, and it will give you a nice plot over time uh, of the two companies' revenue side by side with some initial analysis on top. Also important to note here that most of the things that you see are clickable, right? So it's not just being able to give the answer to our clients, but also helping them uh, to arrive at this answer in the future by themselves. All right, beyond search. Um, so what I said before, I spoke a lot about search and different kinds of contexts. Um, in this particular section, I would like to highlight uh, a few other kinds of use cases that are related to search, but not quite the same. Right? I mentioned streaming and alerting. I'll dive a little bit deeper into this. I will speak about sentiment and summarization, um, saliency and also trends, and deviations of the trends. And finally, a bit about automated news, which is becoming increasingly prevalent um, in, in our ecosystem, in our universe. So as I said before, um, if you run a query in a new search context, you can actually save your query as an alert. Right? Initially, we see people finding the optimal query, finding the right balance between keywords uh, and companies and people and so on. And at that point in time, when they have found the query that they're looking for, they then save the search. Um, and then basically going forward, um, every search is then also an alert. So whenever there's new documents, new data, new news stories coming in, uh, you get alerted that there's new content available. Um, let me see. We have additional syntax. Yeah, we have additional options for alerts, of course, as you can imagine, uh, in terms of delivery option. Do you want a daily update or an instant update or a weekly update and so on? Um, and just to say a little bit of um, how we might go about doing this, uh, if you're familiar with document filtering, you may know how that works. Um, but a typical approach that we use here is that we basically turn search upside down, right? So instead of having documents indexed, indexed in an index and then having queries come by and then basically doing, given a query rank documents, in this case, the query is fixed. So what we do is we store the query, we decompose it, and we uh, store it actually in an index. So we have an index of queries. And then whenever a new document comes in, we index the document like we would uh, normally, we store it in in-memory index, and that index, that actually that in-memory representation becomes the query. So we run that query over the index over queries, right? And matching queries would get retrieved, and we'd be able to alert for those. Um, this works really well uh, for all intents and purposes. There are cases where people want, want have, want, might want to have even faster alerts. Right, so you can imagine if there's like a big economic announcement that's happening or that's being announced that it will happen. And in those cases, before it's actually a lot of people are really struggling to find every scraping milliseconds of, of the time to, uh, to publication. Um, so in these cases, we find that we uh, push out headlines before we push out bigger news stories. Uh, and if you have very simple keyword pairs, you can even push the envelope a little bit more and make it even more faster. Moving on beyond streaming and search, um, to give you an idea, I mean, sentiment in the context of, in, uh, of investing has, of course, has had a long history, of course, as you can imagine. 
what you see on the right hand side here is a Twitter activity chart from the terminal, right? Um, this is by and large now a sort of de facto standard way of figuring out if people are positive or negative, and thus if you should or should not invest in a certain company, right? If you should go long or short. Um, Basically, what we do here is you can run analysis saying what is the publication time of tweets, so it's basically the blue bars in this plot here, and then you can offset that and basically figure out which ones of these tweets are positive and negative. And you can find all sorts of analyses. On the bottom right, you see a number of tweets that have been published around that time frame, right? Uh, that try to, well, that try to, they aim to explain why a particular company uh, is in the news, either positively or negatively. We actually in seeing an increased uptake in people wanting to not just go through a large number of tweets. Uh, so to that end, we aim to provide summarization uh, capabilities that I'll be touch, uh, touch on in a little bit. Of course, if you do sentiment analysis, you can run all sorts of uh, cumulative analyses. It's very similar to the one that I just showed. Um, and of course, you can also flip it around, right? You can basically gather a um, sentiment score over a period of time, in this case, like eight hours, as you can see, and then basically figuring out which are the companies that have been, um, which are the companies that are most mentioned more of, most often in a positive sense and most often in a negative sense, and you can rank them accordingly. Um, <clears throat> now you might wonder, why is this interesting, right? Like uh, doing sentiments detection on Twitter data has been, well, people have worked on this for quite a long time already. To give you an idea, what you see here is a excerpt, an excerpt from a earnings call transcript uh, from the person that you see on the right-hand side here, Edward Hefferman. He was the president and the CEO of Alliance Data Systems Core. Um, again, this is just an excerpt, but as you, as you are reading this, and I would like, and I would ask you, is this positive or negative with regards to this company? I think you, even as a human being, would have a hard time figuring out an answer to that question, right? Uh, it's, it's it's all over. Uh, it mentions a bumpy ride, a loss rate, a high rate. Um, there's noise and delinquencies, ramping up, headwinds, tailwinds, and so on and so forth. Um, to be clear, they actually did really well. Uh, the stock price went up after this, quite significantly so. Um, but it obviously is not clear from this particular uh, piece of text. Similarly, there are also tweets that are well, uh, less obvious. So what you see here, for instance, is a tweet around about the same company, different time frame. And you see um, a number of hashtags. You see some hashtags where the companies are mentioned. Uh, but it's really hard to infer sentiments uh, with regard to this company either way. So the way we address it here is that we have a, a small contingent of annotators, and we tag and we annotate tweets um, specifically for this purpose. Right? Is this tweet positive or sentiment or negative uh, for this particular company that is being mentioned for this particular security? Reason? Sentiment here, by the way, we define slightly differently also. Sentiments we define here as if you see these pieces of information and you are an investor in this company, would it make you change your position either way, right? Would you invest more or would you pull out based on this piece of information? And we use that to do the actual uh, machine, the AI model training basically down the line. All right. Earlier on, I mentioned summarization. Uh, that we see an increased interest uh, from our clients to basically give them um, nuggets-based information, tell me what I need to know now, all right, and, and summarize it for me and, and why that is important. So what we built was a what we call news teams. Uh, it's an on-demand, uh, an abstractive summarization tool. You can search for news. It, it operates in news context, but it also includes social media. Um, you would fetch news stories based on your query from all sorts of different sources. We would cluster the results into coherent clusters and then create a summary, um, a natural language abstractive summary for each of the clusters. As you see this in action on the right-hand side, right? So we looked for uh, any and all stories in the topic of technology for the last two days. And then basically we have these clusters uh, with a short summary of each of them, like Samsung forecasts a 23% jump in profit on chip sales. All right, as you can imagine, you've seen, we've seen trends. Uh, we've seen trends in terms of like a publication count on Twitter or sentiment scores. Uh, you can visualize these things, right? So you can basically say, look, if there's, a, if there's a, an unusual spike in activity, you can get an alert for this. Um, again, if you look at uh, news volume, like how many news stories are being published around a certain company or at a certain financial instrument or around a certain topic, 
you can again use that and flip it around, right? To say basically like, what do I need to know now? What is happening in the world? What do I need to take a look at? What are people talking about um, in, in, in the news uh, and social media ecosystems? Again, you can correlate it, of course, with sentiments. Uh, you can smash everything together to get a more uh, informed visualization. And in fact, what you can also do, of course, if there is a trend and if there's a deviation from the trend, like for instance, there's a certain spike in, um, in a certain securities price, you might want to try and explain why that is the case. So what you see here are two examples of uh, stock prices going up or down by a number of standard deviations. And at the bottom, uh, we see notable headlines that aim to explain this particular jump um, in the stock price. This, by the way, increasingly, we also sell as an enterprise feed, sort of a feed that are more tech savvy clients can use digitally. So in a machine readable form for them to consume news automatically, right? This would flow into their systems uh, and their system would then automatically make or maybe semi-automatically make a uh, decision uh, to make a trade based on this information. Which is a nice um, bridge towards the next section, uh, which is automated news. As I said before, automated news is increasing in terms of um, in, in depth, uh, and also, also in prevalence. This is the first example. This is not strictly speaking automated news. It is automated insights on demand. What that means is basically you push a button um, and we generate a sort of summary for a given company or a given security or a given index uh, there and then. So it will pull, we pull in information from all over the Bloomberg ecosystem uh, to generate this, this news story. The, the texts here in blue are actually linked. So you can click on those things to find more information um, about a particular statement or about a particular um, data point in there. So this is becoming increasingly sophisticated. What you see here is an actual automated news story. Um, and the aim for automated news, of course, is, is to make the world of data easier to consume and to understand. There's so much data out there and the people have a hard time keeping track and figuring out what they need to know. And these are fully automated um, news stories that react to sort of like complex uh, market signals, right? So I mentioned the stock price moving up or down, the number of standard deviations is, is a simple one, which you can imagine more involved uh, triggers for these kinds of like automated news stories. Um, it is also a nice balance between alerting and, um, and story writing, as you can see here, right? Because the trigger is there. The trigger causes automatic news story to be published, so people will get an alert. Uh, and the automated news story itself will pull in additional information, again, from all over uh, relevant databases and relevant sources. The example here that I've shown was triggered on the left-hand side, was triggered when there was a, um, a report, basically, around a economic indicator that said that limited service eating places in the US, uh, the retail sales there actually fell. And what we did find is, on the right hand side you see the stock price for starbucks which is actually one of those companies um and like one two three or a few days down the line starbucks had their earnings call um, and they basically released indeed their quarterly reports and they reported a loss uh, because of this so if you know how to read these signals um, you get a definitive edge as a finance uh, as a finance professional here's another example uh, wirecard that was in the news recently Right, so they started trading some time ago in 2000 at around five euro per share. Um, they did reasonably well. At some point, they climbed to around 200 euros per share in 2018, and then uh, the stock price descended after that. Recently, as I said, they have been in the news. So around April 28, uh, KPMG reported that they cannot conduct a full audit. Um, so there was some management and some consulting issues at hand there. Before KPMG reported this, uh, there were several Bloomberg automated news stories already that showed, for instance, that some of the hedge funds already saw there was something happening and they boosted their short positions in this company. We saw that options volume spiked three times and we have this notion of news heat. That is what I showed before, the volume of news stories uh, around a certain company jumped. We also notes, noted that people were searching for, uh, for more information around Wirecard, right? The query volume went up. Um, but they couldn't find anything because there was very little in, in the news at the point in time, except for this particular piece of news that KPMG could not conduct a full audit. Fast forward um, like a few weeks. Um, in the interim, so the stock price did drop a little bit. It did manage to regain a little bit up towards like 100 euros um, per stock. But then at around June 18, it was reported that over $2.1 billion was missing 
uh, and then again shares drop significantly so they're now trading at around three euro uh, per share and again in the days before we again had automated news stories popping up showing that again additional hedge, hedge funds boosted their short positions we had social velocity spiking uh, and applied volatility spiking also so if you know how to read these signals um, automated news stories are becoming a very valuable um, piece of information for uh, for financial professionals so to conclude, to wrap up, I've shown you um, sort of a a la carte sample of all sorts of search for financially relevant data in a variety of uh, shapes and forms, from search to alerting and so on. I've also touched on situations and cases, use cases beyond search, around alerting and sentiment and summarization and so on. And finally, I gave you examples of how automated news uh, is becoming increasingly sophisticated and prevalent and how it can encapsulate rich analytics in a, uh, not just a search, but also an alerting uh, context. So with that, uh, at the end of my talk, if you want to find out more information, there's some links at the top here. Uh, you can go to techatbloomwork.com uh, forward slash AI. It also, it has a number of blog posts on the technologies that we use, the things that we do. There's also papers on there that we publish, uh, for instance, IR and other venues. If you're interested in this sort of thing, we are hiring. So have a look at bloomwork.com slash careers or reach out to me. Right. If you have an interest in finance, if you have a background in AI in general, information retrieval, NLP, machine learning, and so on, do not hesitate um, and drop me a line. My Twitter handle is there, uh, at Edgar May, and also my email address is there, uh, emeij at nomark.net. So feel free to reach out and don't hesitate. With that, thank you again. I wish you a great rest of the workshop today, uh, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.